How's it going everyone? It's Harsh Pain Reviews, back at it again with another video. And today I'm going to be discussing one of my favorite games to play really right now, given that there's not much to do. Uh, Total War Warhammer 2. This is a review of the game as it currently stands. There might be another DLC that comes out, but I'm not going to be doing a review of that. I'm being I'm doing a review of this current one, as it is right now. Okay, so let's start out with my score. I give it a 6 out of 10, and we'll get into that right now. Let's start with the pros of the game. First off, the setting is very detailed, very immersive. I always like Warhammer. I've, I got into that way before I got into this game, so I've really liked it for quite a long while, and the game provides that. And Warhammer lore really builds the game a backbone that allows it to thrive even during some of the negatives of the game. It's the it's the lore that keeps it going. So another thing that is really good in this game is the large-scale battles. You always gotta love Total War for their large-scale battles. That's what they're known for, but they do it really well in this one. The only one I think they did it better in personally was Rome 2 because I started with that, and it's always got a special place in my heart, and I really like that game, but this one does it very well. It does it very well, better than Warhammer 1, better than some of the more modern ones, Thrones of Britannia. Eh. Yeah, but I really like the, the style that they do here, and in all honesty, it, it does everything well. Every army has a different style of play, generally speaking, and that allows it to have a lot more variety, and I enjoy that quite a bit. Variety is what makes this game interesting for me. For the most part, it's large-scale battles, and it's variety between each of the different factions. You always think, oh, I could play this faction next. How would that be? How could I play that in a different way? And the game makes it pretty easy for you. The UI is nice for battles and campaign. I have to specify that it's good for both. And the building's pretty okay. It only takes like 40 minutes to learn the UI, or that's that's how it was for me. And it's pretty easy. The economy's nice. That's all well and good. Those are about the main cons, is that the game runs pretty well. And there's not too much of an issue on most of the stuff. They have it pretty well polished when it comes to direct game mechanics. The only thing that I can gripe on, so we'll get into the cons now, is the, the the load times are still a bit long. I mean, they used to be like 10 minutes, but now they're still like 90 seconds. And 90 seconds is a long time to wait for one turn to go around. And you know if you have to wait for six turns? Because sometimes that does happen in the game. You get stuck waiting for like 10 minutes. And that's never fun, to be stuck in like purgatory, waiting for the game to load and for you to be able to do stuff. And that just brings you right out of the immersion, waiting for 10 minutes to do anything. It's way better than before. It took 10 minutes a turn sometimes before. It was awful. But now the real issues, because there are way too many factions in certain areas of the map, and that basically turns even an easy game, like you set it on easy, and it feels like it's Doom Eternal, like it's really difficult, because you can't find a place to exist within that space until you kill off a bunch of your enemies. And there's just so much. There's so many different CPUs in that area. And it just makes it difficult to have a relaxed game there, and it makes me not want to play there as much, which sucks, because a lot of my favorite factions are in Lustra. But that's just how it is. And it would be better if the AI wasn't so trash sometimes. I mean, it can get better, the higher difficulties, but really, you shouldn't have an AI that lets you shoot them and lose all of your artillery shots. Use all of them. And they still don't move off the walls. And you're just waiting there, shooting artillery, and they can't hit you with their towers, and you just keep bombing them with artillery. That shouldn't be a good game mechanic for something that has high-level AI. 
Just saying. That's that's personally one of my things, and that's just one example. There are there are plenty. I mean, I have a video here that I'm I'm kind of showing that has one of these units of skeletal great swords just standing there in the center of the town, capping the point for the entire the entire battle. And they could have done that with something like skeleton warriors, but they didn't. And it's not even like they were really defending anything. I did, I never did anything in that in that category to try to take it from them because I didn't need to. Speaking about sieges, the whole the whole siege system needs to be reworked. The walls are an act of detriment to you keeping your cities. The whole thing where every skeleton can pull a ladder out of their ass is just doesn't make any sense. There's no checkpoints, no layered defense. It, it just doesn't make any sense. And if you have a settlement on the coastline, there's no naval battles. There's no naval battles in general in this game. They couldn't have even added something like in Total, Total War Rome 2, where they had naval battles. I mean, Jesus Christ, they really should. It doesn't make any sense. There are factions in this game that are pirate factions and there's no naval combat. Instead, both armies decide to get off their ships and go to a random-ass island that they find and just agree to fight on land just, just because. How nice of you to do that, because I know certain factions have better ships than other ones, but no. No, why not? And, yeah, overall that was a lazy decision. The horde mechanics are bad, too. The horde mechanics are awful right now. The beastmen are a mess. Chaos is boring, which I never thought I'd say with Chaos as a faction because they're meant to be some of the most interesting units in the game. They're meant to be really interesting and it's just bland because they don't actually have demons yet and they'll get that in Warhammer 3, but right now they don't. And <sighs> Nakai the Wanderer was a better DLC to try to fix that a little bit, but it's still garbage in my opinion and there's still a lot of problems with it. I don't personally like it. At all. The horde mechanics need to be fixed, in general. And other factions need overhauls too, like the vampire counts and the wood elves, great examples of those. But a lot of factions need updates that they're not going to get, most likely. Not for some time. And that is a pain in the ass. And the real reason why I give the game a 6 out of 10 instead of a 7 out of 10, which I would have given it, even with all these grips that I have, the game's just really good. And it kind of deserves a 7 out of 10, but the thing is, the price is so high. Even on sale, it's like seven, several hundred dollars to get the... Um, to get game one, game two, and the DLC, which I would recommend. If you're getting this game, get everything, because otherwise you'll have no variety and you won't have much fun. But if you're going to play this game, get all the DLC, get game one and two, it, it costs a lot of money. And to have so many broken features while still having it cost that much, I can't give it a 7 out of 10 in good conscience. Despite it being one of my favorite games to play right now because I'm stuck inside. Even, even though that's the case, I just can't do it. Well, anyways, with all that being said, I'd personally recommend this game to Warhammer fans, fans of large-scale battles. Like, if you're into Total War, get this game. People who are looking for a long-term strategy game because of 2020 and the way things are with people being stuck inside, this game can do that for you. I'd also recommend it to people who enjoy fantasy worlds, any sort of, like, world building, read read the Warhammer lore. It's, it's really good, if you want to. Eh, do whatever you want to do, but I recommend reading it. It's great. So, if, if you're really going to get into this, research it a little bit, figure out if you really want to get into this. I'm just giving you my personal gripes about it, my personal positives about it, but if you really want to figure it out, look into the lore, look into everything that you can, before you buy the game. And if you're going to buy the game, buy it all. Don't, don't half-ass it. Buy the whole thing or buy nothing. Well, with all that in mind, I'll, I'll see you again later.
like and subscribe if you want. And have a good day or night, whatever. Yeah, bye.